Thanks, Greg. Um, well, for those of you that don't know me, I am Jill, and I've been a coach for over two years. I started my journey with Brian's groups, which um, I told him he couldn't leave because I was going to brag about him. He made a huge impact on my life, and I don't mean just physically, but also mentally. And um, then I got to know Greg, and I'm so glad to be a part of the Engage Coaches and get to know all of you, and you've all become my fit family. And so um, it's, I have my real family, and then I have my fit family too, and, and it's, it's a really good thing. Um, it it kind of, this is going to sound really corny, it completes me. So. <laughs> <laughs> So I am currently sitting at Diamond. I did the group that Greg's talking about and the training is so good. I'm going to do it again just because I know that, you know, you're getting so much information flooding into your head that um, it's, it's going to be really beneficial for me to just do it again and get, you know, see what else I can pick up. Um, I have three awesome emeralds under me. Uh, Linnell's here and she's one of them and I'm really glad to have her in my life and part of this team and I um, also my husband Louie has become a coach and he is starting a business and I'm really excited about this because he was, he was born to do this kind of stuff so I'm really excited about that so I'm hoping to um, get him to Emerald and so maybe this push to Diamond you know who knows maybe we could get him to Diamond what the heck so anyway um, so tonight the topic is product of the product and for me, when I think of it, I just, what pops into my head is you got to do the workouts, you've got to drink your Shakeology and let people know what you're doing. And I, I think everybody in the group pretty much knows this. If you're on this call, you know it. And it, maybe it's been a while since you've actually worked a program from start to finish, follow the calendar, done the meal plan, you know, but you know, you need to do that kind of thing. And, um, with that said, you know, even though we may not be following our programs 100%, we can still help our challengers by being transparent with our own struggles. I am a stress eater, and so I try, I, my first thing I want to do is hide it from everybody. I don't want anybody to know, but I'm trying to get better at saying, hey, you know, I really struggle with this too, because, um, people can relate to that. So these products work and as coaches we know we need to be product of the product. So another part of this for me though is that the product is more than just our physical products. Um, it's more than the workout program, it's more than just Shakeology, the performance line, the boost, it's more than our newest super trainer Chris Downing. Woo! I can't wait for him. And then the vegan and vanilla cafe lattes that are coming out. Um, Greg mentioned, have you changed your Shakeology order? Yes, I'm going to get that, get on that. That's, I'm, I'm excited that the vanilla might actually taste good because I don't like the regular. <laughs> so, um, so anyway, so I, I feel like that we are part of this package. We are part of the product of the product which means you know we need to be real we need to be present for challengers and be a part of their lives um, and we're we're interacting with all kinds of different personalities it means we have to bring what we're learning through our personal development to the table um, in my mind we don't need to be perfect we don't have to have all the answers but we need to be people that are working on bettering our own lives so we're improving ourselves not only physically with the workouts and the Shakeology, but mentally. And when we are doing that, we are product of the product. Um, we're the coach that our challengers need. We're better able to interact with our challengers and potential challengers. You know, when people see you on Facebook and see what you're doing and you're being encouraging and being transparent, they can relate and, and that can help you help us help them and we're better equipped to help and show our own real struggles and victories and whatnot. So um, I thought we should make this more of a discussion. Um, so I ask each of you to bring a personal development quote that means something to you. Um, 
I, I think that part of this will help us get to know each other better because you know we're we're on the calls we're interacting but you know it'll also be nice to see a little piece of each other to say you know why is that quote important to you what what you know gets to you with that and um and then that also helps us to see you know just to see what other personalities are thinking and um how they're how other people's minds think. Cause you know, I used to think everybody felt like I did. And then I was like, wow, no, not at all. <laughs> We're all very different. Um, so I'm gonna share with you um, a personal development quote from the Traveler's Gift um, by Andy Andrews. I really love this book and I know a bunch of you have read it, but um, mine is the buck stops here from this moment forward i will accept responsibility for my past i understand that the beginning of wisdom is to accept the responsibility for my own problems and that by accepting responsibility for my past i free myself to move into a bigger brighter future of my own choosing Never again will I blame my parents, my spouse, my boss, or other employees for my present situation. So, um, some of you know my story, but hey, this is this is Hamlet Kitty. Um, I had my last drink May eighteenth of two thousand and nine, and. When I, so it had been eight years ago, I'm, I'm pretty excited about that. But when I first stopped drinking, I went through this period where I was really angry with my father and I was blaming him for a lot of things. Now he is a very nice man, but he and I are so much alike. Um, as a teenager, you know, we just butted heads and, you know, there were arguments and stuff. But I think, um, what was going on with me was that I could see my own faults through him and all this anger was coming out. So um, part of my personal development has been working through some of those issues, internal issues that, and things that just creep up. And so the buck stops here. No more blaming anybody else. You know, I am responsible for my own actions. So um, that's, that's my quote and your quote doesn't have to be you know, anything like you were an alcoholic or anything, it could just be something more normal, but, <laughs> but I would love it if you guys would share. So if you want, I can, you know, pick you out and say, Hey, who wants to go next? Or maybe somebody wants to volunteer. That might be easier. Hey, Jill, this is Brent. I got one. All right. I'd love to hear it. It's from uh, Go For No, and, you know, we're always taught, you know, go for no, keep going for no, and sometimes that is a hinder, hindrance to us. We hear no, and we want to stop. It's like that roadblock. We hit it. It's like we don't want to hear that. We think we should get yes every time, whatever, but in this book, it says we can never let the word no devastate us. Think for a moment what it must be like to be a doctor. Every doctor knows that eventually, someday, they're going to lose a patient. Now, what if every doctor, when they finally do lose a patient, says, that's it, I'm done. I failed, I'm through with medicine. What would happen? Probably wouldn't have any more doctors left out there. You know, and with that you know sometimes that no can be devastating especially if you're trying to hit that mark and everything and all that whole month all you hear is no 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 it takes a beating on you it's like finally you're like i don't want to do this anymore but if we were like doctors i guess we'd all die tomorrow because nobody would be there to help us get healthy so you know just gotta keep that in mind that that's a good point i like that comparing it to a doctor that's yeah, I really like that book, too. Yes, it's a, it's a good book if, if people haven't read it or listened to it yet. It's a very good book. It is. You... And um, that 
fear of hearing no for so many people is really hard too. So I feel devastated, but no need to be. No. When people are ready, they'll say yes. Mm-hmm. And, and saying, hearing no could be tied to something that happened in the past and you just don't want to hear it again, you know, not even associated with the business. Absolutely. You know? Thanks, Fred. Oh, uh, you're it. welcome. Who's, who's going next? Well, I can. Um, so, like, my favorite author and book is, well, my favorite author is Darren Hardy and the book right, is um, the compound effect. And I also like his, his other one, the entrepreneur roller, roller coaster, right? Entrepreneur's mm -hmm. roller coaster. Um, that, those are awesome books. Um, I, I, I scan for a quote. I couldn't find a good quote, but I mean, consistency is definitely, you know, the, the word that comes to mind when I, when I, when I think of that book, right? And, in, in and that's definitely been the key to my business is doing things consistently. I mean, um, but then when I went, I just, you know, went on Google and I, I did some searching and, uh, one of the, the great, uh, people that comes up is Jim Rohn. Have you guys all heard of Jim Rohn? Like he's like the godfather of this business, right? He's the one that, um, Darren Hardy learned from and, and Eric Warre learn from and stuff like that. And, and a lot of things, like if you look, um, stuff that they say, you know, really comes from Jim Rohn, right? And um, like, like I've always heard Eric Warre say, you know, you are going to be the average of the five people that you spend the most time around, right? That really came from Jim Rohn, right? Um, you know, if you want something bad enough, you need, you will find a way to make it happen. Otherwise, you're just going to make excuses. That was another Jim Rohn-ism. Um, but there's one here that I'll read that is, um, if you want to have more, you have to become more. For things to change, you have to change. For things to get better, you have to get better. For things to improve, you have to improve. If you grow, everything grows for you. So, I mean, that's an important important thing that when I was just reading through the quotes I, that just hit me, you know, because we can only grow so much in our business, right? Our teams are only going to grow so much, right? Unless we grow, right? If we want something different, we have to do something different, right? If we want change, we have to be willing to change, right? We have to learn more. Like that's the, re the whole reason that we do personal development is so that we can grow and right, and so that we can have our teams grow and our businesses grow, because because like it's not going to outgrow us, you know, necessarily. I mean, we have to be willing to to grow and to expand ourselves in order to expand our business and to help more people. And so that that's what I took away from that that quote. So yeah, because uh, Greg, that's because you know if we don't look at it that way. We can only take some people up to the level that we know. Right. And if we're not, you know, like what you're saying is if we don't continue to grow, we can't help them get beyond what we are, where we're at. And sooner or later, they'll get tired of what we can give them and they're ready to jump on and move on to somebody else if we aren't careful as well. You know? Right. Or they'll just get frustrated and quit. Right. Yeah. So we, we, we definitely have to continue to grow ourselves right so that we can continue to help our people grow so mm -hmm. okay thanks Greg mm -hmm. who's ready Brian you're unmuted are you ready okay to yeah I had to look to see if Brian Roca was on <laughs> make sure which one um mine that I brought uh, I've listened to the 12-week year two or three times, and I got the book because I need to go through and highlight some things. You just can't, you know, it, it's easier to find over audio. You hear something in the truck, and you're like, oh, I need to go back and look at that. So, you know, how many times have we said, if only we could go back to when we were maybe in high school or go back to whatever age it was, but I want to keep all my knowledge. If only I knew. Well, you know, this quote, and it's actually by Yoga Berra, 
who said it said, if you don't know where you're going, you'll end up somewhere else. And it kind of goes along with uh, kind of with what y'all had already said in a way, but it, if we don't have a plan of where we want to be, who knows where we're going to end up? We're not going to hit that. You know, this, that's why it's important to, to make goals and, and targets so that you have something to reach for, something to strive for. You know, and I created just a little boxing. I don't know if you can see it or not, but since I've really started working, it's just little boxes. I mean, literally a page full of boxes. And uh, see the green ones? That is where I need to be, where I can quit my job with home delivery, home direct, Shakeology home direct, not the extra sales, not the cycle bonuses. That's how many home directs I need to be able to quit my job. And that's not to replace my income, but it's between paying the bills off I need to pay off and bringing that up. And it's only 75 boxes. That's only three home directs a month at, at uh, 25 months, two years and one month to be able to quit my job if I so choose. So, you know, if you don't know where you're going, you'll end up somewhere else. That's great, that, that's great Brian. And um, one thing that I, I hope you're not just thinking in terms of retail sales, right? No, uh, trying right. to get 75 people, but to build a team and have right. them go, right? Exactly, and, yep. Yep, exactly. So e everything what? else beyond that is, is, I don't want to call it the gravy, but everything else beyond that just helps stabilize that core. I mean, the team obviously is the core, but, uh, but it all builds up to that. The, the team will, if, if I don't improve myself, they're going to leave. Right. And I'm going to lose those. Yeah. Okay. Thanks, Brian. Who's ready? Do I just pick on people? I think Shauna's ready. Is Shauna ready? Yeah. I don't even see her. Oh, there she is. <laughs> um, Darren Hardy is one of my favorite too. He's one of the only people I can listen to. <laughs> uh, but anyway, uh, the book that I'm reading right now is called Stop uh, Saving, Stop Saying You're Fine by uh, Mel Robbins, if you can see it. And uh, the one that really struck out to me was the key difference between being stuck and being in a crisis is your relationship to change. And it says when you're in a crisis, your life will change whether you like it or not. But your major task is how you manage that change. But when you're stuck, the major task is deciding if you're going to change at all. And the challenge is finding the ability in the face of overwhelming amount of resistance to create a small change in your life and build on that. So the only way to get unstuck is to force yourself to change. And um, I've kind of been in crisis mode for the last month, month and a half myself. So I can see the crisis, but what I'm seeing more often in my own uh, clients is that they're stuck, that they're, they can't see themselves making those changes. They can't see themselves being successful. So they feel like it's more effort um, to, you know, to, to start when they don't realize that it's just as much effort keeping there and being unhappy about it and taking medications and, you know, all of that stuff that keeps them stuck in that place. So same with, um, you know, changing their job. You know, I don't know how many people I hear all the time hate their work and and they hate that they're getting up and they don't have time to work out and they don't have time to do this because they have to work 15 hours a day at a job that they hate yet they don't think that they can change you know they they're they're stuck so yeah so that, that was fun really <laughs> relatable you know like i think we've all been stuck before and we're all going to come across challengers that get stuck. That's, that's a really that's a good one, Shanna. Thanks. 
Okay, who's ready? I'm gonna go down my list. Wendy, are you are you up for this? Hey there. Oh, there we go. I'm muted. Um, yeah, so one of my biggest problems is fear of failure. And many times I don't get started because I'm so afraid that I'm going to fail. If I don't get started, I will fail. So big thing from the traveler's gift. Um, I'm a person of action. I am daring. I am courageous. Fear no longer has a place in my life for too long. Fear has outweighed my desire to make things better for my family. Never again. I have exposed fear as a vapor, an imposter that never had any power over me in the first place. I do not fear opinion, gossip, or the idle chatter of monkeys, for all are the same to me. I do not fear failure, for in my life failure is a myth. Failure exists only for the person who quits. I do not quit. I am courageous. I am a leader. I seize the moment. I choose now. I'm a person of action. And that is really important to me to remember that all the time. Get going. Don't be afraid. You can do this. Yeah, it, it, you know, what's funny is Louis was standing behind me. He's getting ready to go get Sierra, but he was like, what? That's Wendy. She's a rock star. <laughs> like, you know, Louis, Louis and Wendy are in the same challenge group, so he knows her. But, you know, it's like sometimes the way we see ourselves is very different from how other people see us. And so, yeah, just keeping that in the back of your head, because I know failure is a huge, huge thing for me as well. So thanks for sharing that, Wendy. Yeah, thanks. Ari, you're next on my in my screen. Okay. <laughs> um, yeah, I could probably like Greg quote about anything from the compound effect, but what's basically gets me is the ones I kind of gravitate towards are the quotes like, um, "Health is not valued until sickness comes." Um, mm -hmm. One I just looked up, the preservation of health is easier than a cure of disease, things like that. And then, I don't know what, one of the books I read recently, I can't remember which one it was, talked about how even when you're faced, like the study, even when they were faced with imminent death, yeah, these people in the study, I mean, well, they... They went back to their habits within that year, knowing that they were going to die anyway. And the support group, you know, the ones that did have a support group, they had a 95% chance of, you know, changing those habits or staying, you know, on that path to wellness. So, I mean, it's like, and I've seen some people personally who have, I mean, a guy who had liver um, disease from drinking. He had a newborn baby, and they basically told him, you don't change, you're going to die. And he died. I mean, and he couldn't change for that baby. So so those are the, the quotes that get me and gravitate, you know, that I gravitate towards. So just for obvious, you know, the family and everything like that. So you look at yourself now, you look at your childhood, you see where your parents went, and it's like, you know. <laughs> Yeah. And you know, you, you and I have been friends. You were the first one to comment on one of my posts in Brian's groups. And you're one of the ones that kind of hooked me into like staying in a challenge group because I was like, Oh, wow. That's pretty cool. But, um, that's the one thing about like, that's really made me look at things different, seeing your posts on health and, um, how, you know, it made me think about my own health differently. And how, you know, if we're not taking care of ourselves now, what's going to happen down the road, especially I'm 46. So I'm like, down the road isn't too far away. <laughs> so thanks, Carrie. Yep. Okay. Um, Linnell, you're next on my screen. 
You ready, girl? Uh, do you need me to unmute you? Okay. <laughs> Go ahead. Sorry, I don't know why I was clicking on the little microphone up on my picture and not down below. How retarded. Okay. Anyway, um, no, mine kind of goes with that theory, and mine's just a simple quote. Um, it's just choose your hard, and that's kind of what got me started on my health journey. Was um, and I, I don't think I was way off track, but I was enough to understand what they were talking about. Plus, I have a lot of family um, that struggles with weight issues and. You know, what I see from that is that, you know, they choose, they choose their heart. They either choose to live in the path that they're living, um, which means, you know, they're choosing to take medications for everything that is wrong with them. They're choosing to, um, you know, not be able to bend over and tie their shoe. They're choosing to be sick or unhealthy. Um, you know, or you can choose the opposite end of that. You can choose, um, you know, getting healthy, uh, eating better, staying fit, and, and choose those options so that it'll benefit you down the road. So it's really up to you. It's choose your heart. Which one's harder, to live an unhealthy life or to live a healthy life? I mean, they're both hard, and that's, that's the truth of it. They are both hard. It's just what's your choice. So it's pretty, it's pretty simple, but that, that always gets to me. That always makes me go, huh, what just harder? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. In the long run, what's going to, which hard is going to be better for me? <laughs> right. Exactly. Thanks, Linnell. Sure. Okay. We already see Shannon and Brent. Sarah? Hi. Hi. So I didn't, um, know if I was going to make it to the call because my daughter had a softball game, but it's never going to quit raining here. So we are living in Alaska, apparently. Um, I do have a favorite quote that I use for self-talk a lot um, from John Maxwell. I read the book Fail Forward. And you see, a le you see that theme in a lot of the personal development books. Um, but it's so good when you make a mistake to, I don't know, not trash everything and say, I'm just giving up, I'm giving up. Or like if I didn't pull a workout out the way I wanted to, it's still better than not doing any workout, those types of things. And then also learning the business is, um, I just think about how I used to do things. I didn't have any confidence, so I would always just copy scripts and um, put that out there with people and I couldn't understand why why didn't people want to just do this it's so awesome I don't understand why aren't you jumping on board um why don't you want to work on your health and fitness and um failing forward I just keep going forward and I've also learned to be patient in that despite I'm still moving forward no matter what it might seem like a failure now but maybe down the road someone's going to come back and um finally decide they want to work with me so that is a really it's just a really good way to look at something. Um, I've been a teacher for 25 years, so it's kind of, um, this is out of my realm. And to start something new, I really had to fail forward. So it's, um, it's been, that book was really amazing. And I like that it's a theme in most of these books, Darren Hardy and um, the GoPro. So yeah, anyway, that was my quote. I don't have the book because I borrowed it from the library, but I still remember. You know what, that's the best way to do it, especially when you first start out, is um, get books from the library. You know, it, it, I try to tell all the new coaches, you know, just do that, but get started there. And then when you find something you really like, go buy it. <laughs> yeah, buy it then, because then yeah. you can go back to it. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah, for sure. And I mean, that failing forward is so true. It's like, you don't know why somebody's saying no. You don't know what's going on in their life. No. So, yeah. We sometimes we want to blame ourselves, but it's not really. Good. I always blame myself. <laughs> I have anxiety. Anxiety girl always says, "What did I do wrong? What did I do wrong?" And it's really a good lesson. That's why that personal development is so important because it helps you get out of your own crazy head. At least my crazy head, and I can kind of see that maybe it wasn't about me, and just keep doing my thing. And then if they are ready, they can come around. Yeah. See, that's why I like 
Do I have anxiety too? <laughs> <laughs> I know. We're good together. <laughs> okay. Thanks, Sarah. Hey, Alexandria, are you are you wanting to speak on the call? So good to see you. I haven't seen you since Summit last year. Oh my gosh, I can't wait. Is everybody going to be at Summit this year? It's on the call. Yay! Are you ready? Or do we need to unmute you? Uh, hold on. Okay, go ahead. Um, I don't have any books that I've actually read quite yet, so I don't have a quote. That's okay. Do you have anything you want to share? And if you don't, uh, that's okay too. Well, I'm still very much in the beginning stages of my actual journey because I finally started after I attempted to start like last year. Mm -hmm. So I'm a work in progress. Luckily, you know what? We all are. Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the Work in Progress Club. <laughs> thanks. Yeah, thanks for being on the call. And thanks for being brave and you know saying, "Hey, I'm not quite ready." That's that's okay too. Thank right, you. Paul? Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. I didn't want to interrupt you. I was just saying thank you. So okay, All right. Thanks. Good to see you again, Paul. You ready? Yeah, I got two. Um, first, first one is a nice one-liner. You miss 100% of the shots you don't take. Love it. Wayne Gretzky. Love Had it. to have a hockey one. <laughs> <laughs> All right. The other one is more of a philosophical type thing than, uh, anything else. It's, um, every day, think as you wake up today. I am fortunate to be alive. I have a precious human life. I am not going to waste it. And that's a Dalai Lama quote. Why? Because you think of both of those together, it means action. Right. Yep. You're not going to waste your life. You're going to take some sort of action. And the action is, if you don't take the shot, it's a waste. Yeah, all these people are going to miss out on this great Beachbody project we have to offer. Mm -hmm. Including us, right guys? Exactly. Thanks for sharing, Paul. You're welcome. Armando? Hey guys. Alright, so I'm still stuck with my Miracle Morning because I've done three other books. And Miracle Morning seems to suck me back in. Maybe because I haven't executed completely. Um, but one of the things that I, I keep on going back and remember um, to always do is when you're inviting people, don't just swamp them exactly with what you want them to buy because you're going to sound like a salesperson. Listen to what they're going through so that way you could relate to them. And even though you don't relate to them, you could have, um, you know, uh, some sort of, uh, how can I say this? Like an outcome. Like if they're going through some rough time, just say, I understand. And try to, try to get into their, into their um, phase so that way they can see that you care. You're not, you're not just there to sell. And then always end the conversation with a question so that way you could get them back because if you give them all the answers and that's what they're looking for they're not going to reach out to you so that's one of my many from this book and also um it talks about savers um s-a-v-e-r-s -E which that's how i start my morning trust me there's a couple of mornings i don't do it um, but I try to aim for it. Um, basically, uh, the as for saver is silent. Take a deep breath. Just take in all the stuff that's going on and just try to calm yourself down because it could get kind of hectic. Um, affirmative, um, just to 
make sure that you have everything set um, of what you're trying to execute or your goals or a plan. The V is for visualize, just see what you're doing, adjust. Um, if something's not functioning, that doesn't mean you're failing. It just means that you're weak in that end and just try to fix it, go to another avenue. Um, ease for exercise. We all know we have to exercise in order to, you know, be part of this business because you have to be product of the product. Um, reading, basically what we're doing now is uh, personal development. It's only going to get us stronger, braver, and it's also going to be able to lead our customers, potential coaches, to also get to where we at. Um, if we don't do any personal development, there's no other way that you could get it because unless you're going to school and school is not going to give you all the ins and outs of what's going on at your own business. Um, and then the last one is frivol. If you have something, you wake up in the middle of the night and it's a thought, is a thought or a tip or a dream, put a notebook, a notepad next to you, a nice thing, just scribble it. Because by the time you wake up, you're going to forget. And that little message could have been in a dream could be something that you're going to impact somebody else that certain day so scribble whether it's at nighttime you're driving you see a billboard scribble somewhere on your hand or hopefully not in your car but <laughs> somewhere in a piece of paper you have so that way you could use it because there's always when you have a focus on something it's for a reason you might not need it right then and there but i'm sure because it's happened to me I'm sure I'm like, man, what was that? What was that quote I just saw? And I can't remember. So write everything down and then you're gonna you're gonna be able to implement it into any of your posts or you know, you might be able to share it with somebody you're on the phone with and it's gonna connect with them even stronger. So Miracle Morning is my number one book. And thanks, Greg. <laughs> you got me stuck to this. <laughs> Hey, if you've got a good one, right? <laughs> yes. Stick with it, right? Yes. Thanks, Martin. No, those are great habits. I've actually I've started. I found this little notebook that's pretty small, and, I, and it's kind of thick, and I've been carrying it in my purse. So every time I, you know, I'm sitting at work, I just whip it out and write something down, and you know, and then I have a different notebook by my bed. But luckily, I've been sleeping through the night mostly. So. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> that's good. Thanks again, John. You ready? This John? Yeah, I think you're the only one. I'm not. Sh yeah, I think you're it. <laughs> okay. Well. The one and only John. Since uh, Paulie was sharing uh, sports quotes, I'll throw one of those out there. Nice. Uh, one of my favorite quotes is, uh, "To give anything less than your best is to sacrifice the gift." Does anybody know who said that? I should. <laughs> Steve Prefontaine. Okay. They may know no, who that is. But that, I, I recognize that quote, though. There it is. All right, so um, Paulie and Armando, they know about this, and Greg. Uh, I'm currently reading Gary V for ever. <laughs> and uh, one quote I, I like from the book is, um, and I'm paraphrasing a little bit, he says, uh, never act bigger than you are. And I think that's something that, you get caught up in as far as your posting and you come off, you know, people can see through that and that's, that's not a good thing. So there's times when I do start getting carried away and then I, that's in the back of my mind to, you know, scale it back and to not get crazy with my post and stay in my own lane as far as where I'm at. Yeah, that's, that's good. Cause people can see through it and then they call you out on it. <laughs> right. Exactly. It's awkward. Yeah. Thanks for sharing that, John. Hey, John, you should see the message Paul put on the chat. <laughs> All right, I got to look. Oh, I don't see it. Oh, maybe it's just you guys. <laughs> yeah, you got to share it with everybody now. <laughs> yeah. I are you guys okay. taking notes in class? <laughs> I'll read it. I'll read it. I'll share it. It says the 10th rule. Remember, don't be a little bitch. 
rolling off the floor. <laughs> Page 45. <laughs> Only Paul. We love it. I can't wait to see you guys at Summit. Yay! It's going to be so fun. All right, Pablo, you ready to go? I guess I am. Um... One of my favorite quotes um, is not from one of the books that I have read yet. So um, it's from Gandhi, as far as I can re uh, can remember. It's uh, be the change you want to see in the world. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, pretty much self-explanatory with this business. Uh, you want to help people be a better person. You want people to be better. You have to be better yourself fitness, you want to help people in their fitness pro, uh, pro, uh, progress, you have, to, you have to be the change yourself. You want to be of assistance to, to better the world, you have to start with yourself. You have to be that change yourself in order to reflect it into the world. That's my favorite quote. Yeah, and, you, and you've definitely um, been the change, the proof of the product there, Pablo. Thank You're you. disappearing, Pablo. I'm trying. <laughs> you are. You're doing awesome. Okay. Welcome, progress. Tropic Core with Coach Pablo. I know. There you go, sir. I love it. Working on it. Hey, thanks. Uh, yeah. Melissa, are you ready to go? Um. Yeah. I think one of my biggest weaknesses is letting perfectionism get in my way. I'm basically one of those all or nothing kind of people. And when I'm on and I'm going strong, you know, it takes a lot to slow me down. But when I hit a brick wall, I'm, I have a really hard time taking it one day at a time and letting that get past me and uh you know so i found a mantra and it's called new beginnings every time the sun sets it leaves behind luminous colors those colors are the sun's promise of a new day to come i'm grateful for every sunrise as it means that i have another day to make a positive difference in my own life and in the lives of those around me i start each day with a positive intention, and I only send out love into the future of my day. I live life with inspiration. Like and I've been really struggling with that lately because if I, if I'm like, you know, even at the beginning of each like challenge group, if I'm like hitting it strong and I can do five days a week and I'll do five days a week the next week, you know, the following week I you know I've gotten done with two weeks straight of like just solid awesome just awesomeness all the way around then something gets in my way and I'm like I'm just crushed I'm down I'm out you know I'm just getting started in a beach body and <laughs> my personal coach will attest that my first client has been like I mean, she even considered one of the most difficult people that I could have ever started out with. <laughs> um, the one that's asking me every, like, vegan, uh, vegetarian questions. I mean, she doesn't even know if she wants to, but, you know, and then she had some kind of allergic reaction to Shakeology that you know, yeah, put her in the hospital, and I mean, you know, it's like, so, you know, kind of a new question every day, and then she's in a different time zone, so she's messaging me at 2 a.m. my time, you know, but she sees that I'm up feeding my daughter, you know, I have a 18-month-old, so I might be on Facebook or something, and she starts talking with me, and then, you know, not, you know, not wanting to miss an opportunity I'll message her back and then just not you know so it's like I've really really had to work you know hard to find a balance and you know having a difficult first client it was kind of like I feel like I'm failing because 
every answer I'm struggling with, you know, every, you know, kind of conversation is, is just a real difficult thing. So, I mean, honestly, like I've been out of the scene for a while because I'm just like, you know, I'm freaking out like, okay, is, like, is this something that I want to commit to? And then, you know, I've had a busy couple months of a lot of like traveling out of state where it is so hard for even someone who's been in the program, you know, for a long time to make sure to get in their workouts, you know, when they're, you know, tr you know, flying out of state, you know, with the toddler and then, you know, bring in and make in their Shakeology. So like for me, you know, I'd be going strong and then my flight comes, you know, and then I have a bad week and then it's just like hard for me to jump on the horse. So I guess saying all of that, my mantra is kind of like, really trying to focus that each sunrise is is a new start and I don't have to let my past like failures or speed bumps kind of keep me from moving forward I don't know I think you know you're you're getting it all out of the way in the beginning and so you're super rock star you have already looked up all the answers oh uh, yeah that's what she told me to <laughs> Sometimes I, you know, we all get those difficult customers, like, especially with like BOD, right? And they can't figure out how to get BOD to work on their TV or whatever. Well, that's not our job, right? I mean, I just refer them to customer service. Like, here's the number. They deal with this all day long, right? They're going to deal with like all the problems that Shakeology has and allergic reactions and stuff like that. So don't be afraid to, you know, you can't let someone monopolize all your time, right? You've got to move on and help as many people as you can and not let one person drag you down. So don't be afraid just to refer somebody to Beachbody, you know? Yep, yep. And then, and then too, I mean, just like everybody else, you know, I get a lot of the nodes at the beginning, you know, and I know that that's normal, but I need to just get better at just being like, okay, I'm going to keep doing my thing. And, you know, maybe they keep seeing some of my posts of me working out with my daughter and it'll inspire them and they'll let me know when they're ready. And so I've just had to really challenge myself to not take it as a, you know, a personal failure or something that I'm not doing well enough as. And, you know, if I miss a day too, I'm thinking, you know, I'm these people's coach. Like I'm supposed to have it together, you know? <laughs> so. Did you watch the, or were you part of the team call that we had with Christine Earnhardt? You're muted. Yeah, when was that? It was Wednesday. Last um, I might have seen some of that. Okay, yeah, you should watch it because you kind of remind me of her, you know, like oh. she was starting out and uh, yeah, I mean, and then I, I thought she did a great job of, of saying how she you know, kind of overcame that and, you know, started running her free groups and put together a schedule that worked for her and a plan, you know, because like she said, I mean, I tried suggesting, you know, things that she should do and her coach tried and no one can tell you, you know, what to do except for you, you know, and you've got to, you got to figure out what works for you and and i you know start running those free groups because that's going to keep you accountable like if you've got people in there you're not going to be like oh i got a flight today i'm not going to check with my group because you got 50 people in there who are counting on you you know yeah that's true Thanks, Thank you. And that being said, I might have to go soon. I have a toddler ready for bed. So <laughs> thank you. And then there was one more person on the phone. I didn't get the name. Are you there? Uh, yeah, we can hear you. Who's there? This is Connie. Oh, hey, Connie. Yeah. Um, I have a quote that I'm really not sure where I picked it up at, but I keep it on my phone. And the quote is, too many of us are not living our dreams because we are living our fears by Les Brown. 
That's and good. that is that is me all the way around because I I'm scared of change. I know what's working now, but I'm afraid to take that step further. Does that make sense to you? Absolutely. I mean, I think that in a lot of us that has that has been my biggest holdback, and I keep trying to tell myself it's my fear, not you know, I need to get past it. And, and just Connie, what is the worst thing that could possibly happen if you took that step? Well, I guess what it is, is I'm afraid that I'm going to promise somebody I'm going to be somewhere for a phone call or something. And then knowing the job I'm in, I can't be there or I'm going to be, they're going to be listening to the truck noise, you know? Um, but, I, you know, I'm not thinking at the same time, they know I'm a truck driver. Right. If they've been following me, you know? So this this is where I'm I'm trying to get out of my own head as as someone earlier said. And you might have to reschedule a phone call. So I mean it's it's not like you're gonna die, right? <laughs> so there's nothing right. really for us coaches to be afraid of, right? It's not like we're, right. gonna, we're gonna post and someone's gonna come kill us. So. <laughs> Well, and, and the other the other issue that I do have, of course, is like I have not figured out yet how to do a videotape of me doing a workout in this truck. It just don't work. There's not enough distance. <laughs> I think that could go viral if you could figure out how to do that. <laughs> totally. Well, you know, there there are some truckers that have done the YouTube. And I've been trying to find a few of them, but unfortunately, when I go looking, I haven't found them yet. But um, I've been been listening to a trucking channel that I have on my XM, and they are, you know, health has been the biggest hurdle of truck drivers, and I'm trying to find a way to get into that niche to to get my voice heard. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm I'm picturing you like opening up the back end of your truck and maybe setting up some sort of tripod for your phone and you know, like woo. -hoo. That's what you should do, Connie. Is get in the back, right? There's my yeah. With the load, you know, whatever's back there, you're hauling. <laughs> okay, yeah, in the trailer itself. Yeah, right. But see it? Yeah, I'd ha I'd have to get get to where the Sun would hit inside there because it is it can be pretty dark <laughs> oh yeah right. even in the middle of the day mm. We're gonna, you have to get some of those battery powder powered lights that, that, that you shine in and you know you gotta you're gonna rig up the rig girl <laughs> well unfortunately see i don't have the same trailer all the time oh dang i i drop the trailer and pick up another one you're you're gonna have to like but, this yeah thing. All your gear for <laughs> for your videos. <laughs> you should invest in a GoPro <laughs> camera. That, that would be oh, cool. Yeah. You know what? A GoPro camera. Okay, I don't think I've seen those. Oh, you haven't seen those? Like people strap them to their bikes and trucks and whatever. They even have a suction cup for the windshield, and you yeah. can put on the windshield. Oh, cool. Okay. So now when you're driving. Yeah, now okay. when you're driving. <laughs> but oh, you come could. on. <laughs> you don't you don't want to see me. You don't want to see me get viral with these people out here. No. Oh, we totally do. I'm so, I'm, yes, we do. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I know you all resemble them four wheelers, but sometimes you all can get in my way. <laughs> <laughs> Nice. Well, Ronnie, thanks so much. All right, thanks, Connie. I think we're You're welcome. at uh, 8.07 now, but we got through everybody. Yay!
Yep. Thank you. Thanks, Jill, for leading our discussion. That was great. Got to know a little more about everybody. So thanks, yeah. guys. I'm excited for Summit. All right, Paul, you've got big shoes to fill next week. Greg, I got a question. Yeah. Um, are we going to talk about like all the stuff we need for Summit? Like what? Like clothes. It's my first time. <laughs> like anything, we've never been. Yeah. Uh, sure. Like how many pair of underwears we got to bring? Come on. <laughs> Two a day. You need to bring workout clothes every day and, you know, jeans, shorts, whatever. There's a thread on the Coach Summit page where it, uh, a bunch of people listed who've been mentioned some things to bring, didn't have to be fancy. It's probably yeah. buried now. Honestly, most people will wear workout clothes like during the day and like at night, you're gonna wear probably shorts and t-shirts, you know? I mean, I would just bring like one pair of pants and a, a dressier shirt, just, you know, just in case that we go out to dinner to someplace nice or whatever, you know. Okay. Um, but, you know, don't, don't overthink it. It's just casual. It's going to be hot. It's going to be 100 degrees and 100% humidity. So, you know, be prepared to change your underwear three times a day. <laughs> All right. Did, did you all download the Summit app? Yeah. Does it talk about what to wear? Uh, there's, there's a bunch, I, not yet, uh, but there's people posting already in it, and that might be an, another source of information. Yeah, I ran into a problem one time at Summit. I I did not bring any pants. All I had was shorts, and I was up on stage, you know with like elite coaches and stuff right and everyone else was dressed up in like suits and dresses and stuff like that because they were on stage and i was in like my shorts and a t-shirt so spotlight yeah yeah that was that was embarrassing but so now i always bring it wasn't the worst thing <laughs> right i i survived so it wasn't that bad all right guys We'll see you later. We'll All talk right. more about Summit in the group when we get closer. All right. Thanks, Joe. Thanks, Greg. All right. See you later. All right. Good night, guys. Good night, Good night. everyone.